Hey, what's up YouTube? Lightsaber Samurai here and I'm back again for another video. This time putting on for a bunch of games that aren't as bad as you might think. So, you may have had a bunch of titles growing up. Some of your favorite games that, for whatever reason, just did it for you. Either they had the graphics you like, the a story, gameplay mechanics you like, but despite how much you held a torch for this game, you had video game magazines, the internet, and your friends proceeding to crap all over your favorite games. So, in this video, I wanted to highlight a bunch of my favorites in this genre. Roll intro. All right, so going into the first video on this list, and I'm taking it all the way back to the NES. This was one of my favorite games on the NES, but uh, its home ports received no critical acclaim at all. That is, of course, NARC on the NES. And this is a game that often gets panned in forums and on the internet uh, for just being a crappy port of its arcade uh, big brother. But like I said, for me, it did it. Um, for one, the major thing on this was this is the very first game that I played couch co-op. So me and my brothers, we used to pick red and blue and we used to go through the levels and try to take down Mr. Big. Uh, this is kind of a belt scrolling shoot 'em up game, um, kind of a fuse between maybe something like Contra and then again, something like Double Dragon on the NES. And like I said, I thought that this game had fun gameplay. Uh, you got to drive around in the car in the third level. Uh, you can shoot people, you can arrest people, you can confiscate drugs and money, you can blow people up with rockets. Uh, like I said, this game for me had it all, but unfortunately, most people didn't feel the same as, like I said, this game is critically panned by most people that's ever played it. Although that could be because most people grew up playing the arcade version best, and this was kind of an example of the NES not having quite the arcade pedigree as arcade machines did at the time. We wouldn't really see that that gap shortened until the 16-bit era, but I still think this is a pretty noble effort. Like I said, you got simultaneous play thrown in here. Uh, I believe they threw in an extra level, um, but like I said, other than now, the other levels are here, and it's a challenging and fun game. So, like I said, definitely NARC. It's cheap because everybody shit on it, so if you see it and you don't have it on the NES, be sure to pick it up. Enter the Matrix on the original Xbox. Now, this was a movie tie-in to The Matrix Reloaded. Unfortunately, this game suffered from being rushed out to market because they wanted to make the deadline of the DVD release of The Matrix Reloaded. And because of that, we did have some issues with the graphics. We had a bunch of glitches, some audio syncing issues, but at the, ga at the game's core, it is a pretty entertaining third-person beat-em-up and shooter. Uh, you play as actually Ghost in Nairobi, two minor characters from the movie, and it kind of plays on their in the meantime stories while the the main events from the movie are happening this is kind of what ghost and Nairobi are doing on the sidelines i thought it was very entertaining had some pretty cool set pieces of course they got cameos from um pretty much all the other pretty much all the actors in the movie everybody comes back to reprise their roles in the movie i thought the combat was fun the bullet time was dope um and so yeah like i said for me this game did it for me a technical feat on the original xbox this is one of the handful of games that broadcast in 1080i which in 2003 was pretty much unheard of i mean most tvs didn't do 720 at the time so uh the fact that this game was this game will go like 1080 not bad of course it's interlaced but still looks great on modern tvs and like i said over time i think people are starting to come around this game is actually pretty fun so like i said that's definitely one of my favorites there for the playstation 2 it also came out on the original xbox i've got crouching tiger hidden dragon now crouching tiger hidden dragon is um of course a movie tie-in based on the the 2000 movie that came out starring chow young fat and i believe michelle yo don't yes michelle yo uh zang z yi that was also her um acting debut in that so um in this you play as the crew and they're fighting over the green destiny sword one thing that stood out for me is the combat in this and you know i love my third person 
uh, beat em up games, my hack and slash games. And this one had a really cool combat system in the fact that it had combo blocking. Now, uh, when enemies attack you, you can press the L1 button uh, in sync with their attacks and you'll kind of do these choreographed blocks. Doing that restores your health and it looks totally badass. You can proceed to counter and put the beat down on them. They had special like throw moves and combo moves. Uh, you have wall running, um, you have jumping off the walls, and uh, you have kind of like that Bay Futua like Hong Kong cinema like slow mo like jump as you kind of glide down as you jumped off of buildings and things like that. Like I said, they tried to they tried to really nab the feel of the combat in this game, and it's one of my favorite games simply because of the noble effort they put on. The thing this game was really brought down by the camera though. The camera was terrible, that and the fact that this is kind of an older game so it didn't really have a really good lock-on system. For enemies, you kind of just have to position yourself in front of them and proceed to slash them up. And so because of that, that also kind of made the, the combo blocking a little harder to pull off, I think, compared to um, if we saw this mechanic in some other games. This is a, uh, like I said, the combo blocking in this, uh, I'll show you here in the gameplay, but it really makes the, the gameplay stand out. and. Something that hasn't been used, that wasn't used before, and something I haven't seen since. So, yeah, definitely Crossing Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Okay, here. So next up is a um, is a entry from my buddy Steven. We was talking. To, I was talking to him on Facebook, kind of getting some feedback before I did this video. And he mentioned one of his favorites, also one of my favorites. That's Alpha Protocol on the PS3, and this is the 360 version right here. So you play as a secret agent in this, you kind of go through the storyline, but it's kind of a cross between James Bond and Mass Effect. They have a cool um, system here as far as choices you make and dialogue choices and um, things branching out. And so this game, I mean, this game basically begs for multiple playthroughs. I thought the, uh, the graphics and gameplay were okay for its time. Uh, you can go guns blazing, you can... Uh, go stealth instead and you can level up and earn perks to suit both play styles You can also boost things like your persuasion intimidation things some similar to what you'd see in um, a lot of Bioware games like um, Knights of the Old Republic again This was done by obsidian who actually did Knights of the Old Republic to the Sith Lords Which is a great game in its own right so that gameplay is definitely in here This game got panned by critics and I really don't know why because it's a dope game and if you don't think it's dope, you can fight me, son. Fight me, son. Anyway, sticking with the Xbox 360, this is a game that I highlighted in one of my Xbox 360 hidden gems. Uh, if you haven't seen those, definitely be on the lookout for those on my channel. I've got three videos with another one on the way on Xbox 360 hidden gems. But anyway, this game is too human. This was the final game by Silicon Knights before they were shut down, I believe, I want to say around 2012, is it? Don't quote me on that. Uh, I mentioned that in the video, but like I said, unfortunately, this game was panned by the critics, and as a result, sales of this game were in the shitter, and Silicon Knights had to shut down soon after, which is honestly a shame, because this game had a lot of unique ideas. It takes place in kind of a um, futuristic world, but it kind of blends um, kind of a... Uh, kind of steampunk and Norse mythology and with a uh, technical vibe on it and so like I said you play as a a god who's been um, enhanced with a bunch of cybernetic augmentations he having fewer than most hence the name two humans so I mean like I said I have definitely you can check this game out this game goes for dirt cheap you can't see the tag but I paid 179 for this at my local GameStop so if you see this game definitely definitely pick it up Okay, so moving on, and now I'm hopping over to the PS2, and I've got, starting off, um, Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy VII on the PS2. Now, this game is kind of in the Final Fantasy VII universe. Uh, during this time, we were, this is right around the time Advent, just actually after Advent Children came out, um, which is a great movie. And this game is a tie-in to that. I believe it takes place sometime after the events of Advent Children. And you play as Vincent Valentine, who's out to take over the secret organization that's kind of rising in the ruins of Midgar. Of course, it was destroyed in the events of Final Fantasy VII. And most people crapped on this game. And honestly, I can see, 
I can see a lot of the gripes people have with this game, especially it was really because of the way it was marketed. And they said things like, oh, if you like Devil May Cry, you'll like this. And that's kind of how they touted this game as being Devil May Cry fused with Final Fantasy VII. What we got was uh, just kind of your standard third person action shooter, which was okay with me. They threw in some other things like using, you can, uh, of course, Vincent Valentine was the gunslinger of the group in Final Fantasy VII. Uh, you can use material in this game. You can fuse it with his guns to shoot flame shots and, um, you know, uh, lightning shots and um, freezing shots and things like that. And so honestly, the, the combat lacked what most people's expectations were because you're thinking Devil May Cry, you're thinking hopping off walls, you're thinking stylish combos. He has a melee attack in here that's like a simple three hit combo, but really it's the shooting that's the star of the show and you really get a choice of like three or four uh, ammo types. He has his pistol that he uses, um, can't remember the name of it, but he puts uh, he can add attachments to it to turn it into a rifle, turn it into kind of like a submachine gun, I think a shotgun also. And so, like I said, I was highly impressed by this uh, just because the cutscenes in this, the production values in this game were extremely high. And the cutscenes, like I said, watching these on the PlayStation 2, they were equivalent to basically what you saw in the Advent Children movie. Uh, the graphics in this game are stellar, stand out, like the in-game graphics, especially the, uh, the 3D cutscenes. Like I said, they look straight out of the Advent Children movie. And like I said, it's got an interesting storyline. So like I said, I don't think this game deserves all the hate it got. It definitely was a game that didn't that didn't meet most people's expectations considering they were comparing it to, you know, games at the time like Devil May Cry. But this game still holds a soft spot in my heart and it's still a fun game I like to play for a couple of minutes every now and then from time to time. Now, I don't understand all the hate the Devil May Cry 2 gets. I really don't. Especially when you compare it to the original Devil May Cry, which the original Devil May Cry was dope, but this did, this actually had a lot of improvements for me. The original Devil May Cry, first of all, those kind of the, it got rid of kind of those tank controls because Devil May Cry originally was going to be a Resident Evil game, it was going to be Resident Evil 4 when they started tinkering with it, and they actually, Devil May Cry and the Onimusha series spawned from them trying to figure out how to make Resident Evil 4. And so that's why like the, the gameplay is much slower in the first Devil May Cry compared to everyone in the series. This was the first that kind of had a more faster action gameplay. Of course they had it in the original Devil May Cry, but you were fighting against those take controls, you were fighting against those static screens um, and things like that. And so this definitely upped the ante on all of that. The wall running, the double jumping, the uh, multi-targeting when you rock dual pistols like i said i thought the combat in this game was stellar and maybe it was in the um in the story mode that that uh, the story of the game maybe didn't hold up to the original devil may cry but for me i don't think that mattered a whole lot and i mean you got to play as uh, lucy or whatever so they packed a lot of content in this game they have the blood palace in here where you can just um, kind of like a survival mode where you just beat up a bunch of people. You can play through the game as Lucia and use her weapon. She's got a different play style from Dante. And so, like I said, I thought this was a high-flying action-packed sequel, but apparently I was the only one because people gave this game crap for, in my opinion, no reason. I really don't know. I mean, the graphics were a step up. Like I said, the, the gameplay as far as the movement was definitely a step up to me, getting rid of those tank controls and a lot of the static screens and stuff. And so I think that made the camera in this way more manageable than the original game. So that's just my opinion. But and now we are hopping on the Nintendo Wii. Now the Nintendo Wii itself is a console full of games that people tend to hate on. And I honestly do not disagree with them one bit. But one game that I will defend on the Nintendo Wii is a game by that company uh, UFO, which kind of made a bunch of budget title games for a bunch of various systems mainly for the i saw them a lot on the wii and on the uh playstation 2 and this one here is heavenly guardian and so heavenly guardian that came out on the nintendo wii i also have it on the playstation 2 um it's a great kind of top down shooter game um interesting to note about this the guy that developed the uh, pocky and rocky series he split uh, I think it was a Capcom game. He split from Capcom, 
tried to strike out on his own, wanted to continue Pocky and Rocky, but Capcom owned the rights, kind of like the Mega Man situation and the Castlevania situation. So he struck out on his own, and this is the spiritual sequel to Pocky and Rocky. It plays almost exactly like those games, and those games are awesome. You play as uh, Sayuki, who's the Ice Princess. She's trying to... Um, uh, I believe she's trying to get together a medicine to heal a, a boy who's sick in the village and try to cure his fever. And so, like I said, the gameplay in this is, I mean, you'll, I'll show you the gameplay. It's very similar to Pocky and Rocky. It's a very colorful game. The game controls well on both consoles. Uh, I like it on the PS2 a little bit more just because it doesn't have so much of the waggle controls with doing like her super moves and things like that. But that's really not an issue, honestly, in the grand scheme of things. The game is fun plays excellent and most people don't even know this game exists. A few people that do tend to shit all over it. Again, I don't know why. So, Heavenly Guardian. And my final game on this list, and like I said, this is part, I'll probably have to do a part two at some point because I'm looking through my game room, looking through there. I see a bunch more stuff that we need to go over in this category. So, last one I want to talk about is Dark Sector. And this one is kind of a pick from my boy Slumpenstein. Search him out on YouTube. I was watching uh, the first video I saw of him. He was doing uh, hidden gems for, I believe, the Xbox 360. He had the Xbox 360 version of Dark Sector. Um, it was a game that I had played before, so I went back and picked it up. Found it on the PS3 for $2.99. And at the time, this game was panned as being another generic artificial third-person shooter, blah, 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 blah. I don't see the problem with that. I love third-person shooter games, and especially when they're as polished as Dark Sector. This game was in development for like four or five years, and when it came out, the impressive thing about that is you got games like Duke Nukem that was in development for years and years and years, and then when it came out, it didn't really hold up as far as graphics and things like that. This game came out, it was a top-notch looking game in its day. It still looks good today, and you play as kind of like the CIA soldier that's um, sent to Russia. I think he's taken down this rogue organization. They're using this kind of like, it's basically like a virus similar to a symbiote. He gets infected with it and it kind of mutates his arm and he can summon this weapon called the glaive at will. So not only can you do uh, firefights and frantic shootouts, it's a cover based shooter, but you can also do cool melee attacks and finishing moves with the glaive. You can also throw it and decapitate enemies and it'll come back like a boomerang. Um, like I said, this is a very, I don't care, it, the storyline may be a little bit generic, but the gameplay is super polished. It's a super cheap game because nobody played it and nobody liked it, but like I said, this is a game I continuously defend because it's definitely an impressive effort on the PS3 and the Xbox 360, and it was one of my, my more favorite hidden gems of the last generation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me this week, but lay it down in the comments below what are some games that you think uh, are not as bad as most people think. As always, I'm Lightsaber Samurai. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Be sure to hit that like and notification button if you're feeling sexy. I do believe that's all I got for you, Lightsaber Samurai. Out. Booyah!